And it's that time, everybody. Happy Wednesday. It's Kate Richberg, and I am live for beadshop.com. Here we are. Um, we're going to have a fun day today, though we have fun whenever we're together. Happy September to all you all. Um, it's great to uh, to be here on this 1st of September. I um, have so much to share with you today. I am sure that when you opened your newsletters this morning, you saw our September mix, which I'm going to show you in a second. I designed it because it is my birthday month. So I thought I'd wear some sapphires here and dress up a bit because today the project that we're making is going to celebrate the iconic Elizabeth Taylor and her Bulgari sapphire. So um, I don't know. I love sapphire. It's my one of my favorite stones. I love blue. And so um, so that's why I chose this. So I'll tell you a little bit uh, about the, the backstory of it. So uh, it's great. Look at so many people are here. It's great to have all you all here. It's great. And so today we are going to tackle um, the five stitch bracelet. And I'm going to share um, just some um, impressions, I guess, and some ideas about uh, how I put together the five stitch bracelet. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But just so you guys know, so I don't do it at the very end of the broadcast and forget because last week with Janice here and, you know, it's always a bustle to get online and to go live. We have, of course, as you know, at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to do a giveaway. And this month, all the giveaways are going to be things that are, well, they're all, always actually pretty good, but they're going to be really fun things. I'm going to show you what's in this baggie uh, shortly, but this is going to be the giveaway today. So just so you're prepared at the end of the broadcast, you guys, when I tell you, first of all, if you're watching in our bead shop group, uh, the bead table, welcome. It's great to have you. And also we're broadcasting live into the great bead extravaganza group today. So if you're both in groups, you guys, you need to let StreamYard, which is our um, streaming software platform, you need to grant Facebook um, permission to see your Facebook live comments. If you're watching on our page or if you're watching on any of the YouTube platforms, you're all good to go. Okay, but what you need to do is you need to just jump right over to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and it will um you just need to grant permission so uh, StreamYard can see your name. So at the end, when I run our giveaway tool software, you will be able to enter. Okay, and I'll give you the hashtag to enter at the towards the end of our broadcast. But just so you're ready to go, um, that's what you need to do. Okay, so let's go back. Let me get rid of this. And let's take a look um, at um, the piece. So first of all, let me show you. Um, this is what I based this iconic piece or this mix off of this iconic piece. You know, I have always loved Liz Taylor, may she rest. And um, I've loved her as an actress. I've loved her as a cultural icon. I've loved her as a, a fashion forward forward thinking strong woman all of those things so during her romance she's had she had many you know she's known her many husbands but i believe that her one true love of course was richard burton and richard burton and liz taylor part of their love affair their love language was he giving jewelry and she receiving it so um way back long story short uh, it was a few years ago. There was a um, one of the jewelry exhibits at the, I think it was at the De Young. It might have been at the Palace of Fine Arts, uh, not Palace of Fine Arts, but um, um, 
I think it might have been at the De Young. I, I'm not sure uh, here in San Francisco, but there was an amazing Cartier exhibit, um, and that had a few of Liz's pieces in it. Um, I also have the Liz Taylor jewelry book that chronicles her her jewelry um, as well. But this uh, that you see here on the screen in front of you, you see the lovely Liz and Richard Burton um, there, and she's wearing. Um, the Bulgari sapphire that he gave her. And it's a beautiful, um, uh, beautiful, long, luscious necklace that I just love, love, love. So my inspiration for this piece, uh, this mix and kind of this piece um, is a uh, pays tribute to that Bulgari sapphire. So um, anyway, so that's a little bit of the background here. So let's take a look um, at the piece that I have in front of me so we can take a look um, and see here. You know, and Liz, Ms. Taylor, I like to think that I would call her, I'd be, that we'd be great friends and I'd be able to call her Liz. Um, but uh, she was known, right, for her love of jewelry, right? And she was also known for the color of her eyes, right? Violet, violet eyes. So, um, I, so I incorporated a little bit of both uh, in this piece. So first, let's take a look at the mix, okay? Um, and I love that Kathy said that she got to share um, an elevator with uh, Elizabeth Taylor back in Vegas in the 80s. Yes, yeah, she was breathtaking, you know, in all of her her movies. And one of my favorite movies of hers, I think, is Giant. Um, I just I just love that that movie um, so much. So um, it was uh, it's one of my faves. But she's captivating in all of them, even that. Um, <laughs> what is it she did in the 70s or early 80s that um i think it was the mirror cracked the uh agatha christie movie that was um she wore some amazing clothes in that one um i even love that movie um so anyway here is the uh september mix it's called sapphire sparkle and we've got some new beads in it and i'll just pull it out here right on this pad and you can see uh what it looks like so we put in some half tilas in this and it's a brand new half tila which is um has this luscious kind of coating on the front it is a frosted kind of clear one that looks like this okay and then we also have a new bugle bead that's this guy and then we have um some new seed beads a sapphire um silver lined we've got all kinds of great beautiful stuff in this one so it's a real stunner and i think and this cut this this eight um uh eight dot cut bead which i also really love so there's a lot of really beautiful things in this so this hopefully will inspire you if you don't want to make um a five stitch you can there's all kinds of things that you can um do with this piece with this wonderful mix and so you know i've had this mix made up for a while right and in true kate fashion i didn't really start thinking about what the heck i was going to do with it um until just a couple of days ago because um you know we have other projects in the works and stuff like that but i could not put it off any longer i could not procrastinate one more moment so i decided when i was chatting with drea i was like you know what i think a really fun mix or a really fun project for this would be to do a um a five stitch so that's so that's what i did and the five stitch um i really i just i just love it and um it's a really fun project um created by one of our former employees nicole who has since passed away um and we did a five stitch tribute to her a while back but we haven't really done anything else with this five stitch so i'm going to lay this out here and show you kind of what we've got um, this one it's kind of a work in progress so i'm going to be working on it 
just a little bit more with you today and I'm going to select kind of what I'm going to do next. But there's some really fun things that happen with this piece and I'm going to get a little bit closer so you can see this right here. Um, and this clasp is kind of the linchpin of everything that we've done. So I'm going to actually grab one of the original five stitch projects. So bear with me. You guys can look at that while I grab it. But the five stitch is consists of a bunch of different stitches, right? So we've got some macrame in there. We've got some some beaded macrame. We've got some um, laddering, um, all kinds of cool stuff in there. And so it's really just to um, kind of a, what do I want to say? It's kind of a smorgasbord, I guess, of different, um, different techniques, different styles. Um, and so you can really play around with it. So I purposefully, when I started this piece, I did not, you know, I took a look at the stitches that Nicole used, and then I kind of closed the screen, right, and kind of thought about them in my head. So, because um, I didn't, I, I wanted to kind of play around with the technique and the look of the piece, okay? So the, I've got the sample sitting right here. And I want to show you one of these. This is one of the ones that we made in tribute to Nicole. It's not one of the ones that Nicole actually made. So, um, and this is, Kathy, you did spy it. It is a new clasp, and I'm going to talk about this in a second. But here's the five stitch. And so essentially what we've got here, let me lift, let me get this in here, and let me lift this up. Okay. So essentially, like I said, it's some beaded macrame here. This is some of that, um, the big shadows that are on the leather and, and captured with some CKC. There's some herringbone, which is here with the CKC. There's some laddering. This is traditional laddering. I actually am using infinity stitch in mine rather than traditional laddering, and I'll show you that. This is that herringbone that captures the Baroque pearls. Um, and I really worked hard on perfecting this for you guys. Um, kind of, this I think is um, a stitch that sometimes people are like, I don't know how to do that. So I, I played around with it a bit. I actually played around with it last night quite a bit. So, which is why <laughs> this piece maybe isn't as finished as it could be. But I'm going to share this technique with you. And I don't want you to be overwhelmed by this five stitch project, right? Because it really is just stitches that you like that you throw in there. All right, here's some more traditional laddering. Here's some flat macrame using all three different colors of the CKC. And then we've got more laddering here with some of the cubes in the center. And then it's just closed off with a loop here, okay? So what I did was I kind of, like I said, I kind of shook all of those, um, techniques up in my brain. Um, and then I chose some ingredients. So I used the 0.4 millimeter Chinese knotting cord. Okay. And I used it in geisha, in ink blue, and in boysenberry, because I thought this kind of worked with the whole violet sapphire theme for Liz Taylor. So I like those colors. So this is the 0.4. And I think the 0.4 works really well with this palette and with this, um, th the size uh, with the leather, because the leather that I used, it's our new sapphire metallic. And this sapphire metallic uh, we have it in the 1.5 and the one millimeter. And I don't use one millimeter that often in my projects, but I wanted this bracelet to be a little more delicate. And I don't really even know how many wraps this is going to eventually be. Um, but you can see this is the 1.0 that I used. You could pop it up to a 1.5 millimeter leather. Um, and you could even pop it up to the 0.5 um, millimeter Chinese knotting cord, but then everything will be a little bit bigger, right? The scale will be a little larger. So I use those. Of course, I use this new pave clasp that we've got. And the pave, it's actually a large um, lobster claw that looks like this. 
And then it has this nice oval link that it um, sits into. Okay, and it's just, it's sparkly and pretty and I really, I love it. And then I chose, so the, I chose some Ceylon to do the, um, the flat macrame sections of these pieces, right? And we got in, we used to carry it and we didn't carry it for a while, but now it's back in. This is uh, the Capri um, Ceylon and I'm using it in fine. We carry it in the regular and in the micro, but the fine size is what I used here. And I just love the vibrant, beautiful look of that blue. It's a perfect sapphire blue. So um, it goes well with the mix. Of course, I used a tube of our sapphire mix. And then I haven't used them in the piece yet, but I'm going to. I got the um, the four millimeter fire polish in this iris tanzanite and in the glittery um, silver matte. And I'm going to be using those. Okay. And then um, I also used the uh, Miyuki pearls. I use those in the silver, the silver. Um, let me look and see here real quick. I'm going to open up my, um, my page over on bead shop. So you can find the um, project, all of the project, like I am doing right here, right on beadshop.com, uh, right on the homepage. And if you jump over there, the project is called Budapest because it's named after the Budapest Sapphire. So, um, so that's why we named it. We named it that. It's the Baroque Pearl in silver is what I'm using. And then the clasp, it's the Lux Pave Lobster Claw, which is, I think, just gorgeous. So these silvery pearls, I think, are a beautiful addition. So let me pop back over here so I can see all y'all. Uh, let me get a little tray, and I'm going to pour some more of this out. Now, you could add or take away or, you know, whatever it is you wanted to do with these guys. But I'm going to show you how I used everything. So now with the mix, what I did was, and I don't usually do this, but I needed to know how many I had to use. Okay, so I dumped out, I literally dumped out one of the tubes and I separated them. Okay, so I separated them into, and your, uh, let me just say, your, mix of beads will probably vary because these tubes are done super randomly. So, uh, but this is what I had in my mix. I've got these bugles right here. Okay. I've got, I put these guys in the, um, the half tile is already, I put in my little dish. I've used about half of them already. Um, and then I had these, uh, eight dot, these eight cuts here. I had, um, I pulled out the, um, matte crystal silver lined a dots i pulled those out into a baggie and then all of the blue um a dots i just dumped into a baggie um themselves i did not split these out and let me dump this out so you can kind of see that really rich blue mix there's i think three different tones in there so that's what i did and so then i just started. And when I don't know what to start with, right, I will always just start with the flat beaded macrame knot, which is what I did here. So to start what I did, and I'm going to start, I'm going to do a short piece for you guys and demonstrate all of these techniques. And then we'll figure out what techniques we're going to use as we go on with this piece. So our sapphire leather comes in four yard bundles. Okay, so I just took all four yards. And then I came in. And maybe I'll, I, I split it. So there was two yards. I'm going to just cut this down. So I'm not doing so very much. Let me get that out of the way. And then I attached my clasp together so I had it here like so. And I just came through and put my clasp through. Then 
what I did. Now you can do this a couple of different ways, however you want to attach it to your board. Um, I'm going to get just a piece of kitchen twine, the usual kitchen twine that I've got here. And I'm just going to tie a little knot. So I've got a loop and I'm going to put my clasp in there. And you can see I'm going to attach this to my board just like that. I'm working on the short length of my board like this, OK? Um, and then we can, uh, or you can use the long way as well, OK? Whatever works. But I'm going to use this short way as well here, OK? So now um, I'm going to attach it here on the other side like so. So now I'm just going to start. You can see I jumped in with the Ceylon. And there was a question back in the chat that says, could you do this whole thing with Ceylon? You could, but the, the Ceylon and the CKC hang a little bit differently. Can you see that if I hold these in my hand? The CKC is really super supple, where the Ceylon is a little bit stiffer. So it'll make um, your bracelet sit a little bit differently. But you can certainly try it, you know. And if you're worried about your, like, the final design of a five stitch, right, if you're going along and kind of making it up, right, I wouldn't worry too much and i would just start one maybe a little tester or a little sampler right so that you're not super committed to anything and who knows your your tester may end up being just a nice little bracelet for you to wear and then you can jump in and commit to the big long five stitch okay so this is like my little tester here OK, so I've come in. I've also cut maybe about a yard, maybe a little bit more, about a yard and a half. So I have enough of this. This is the um, Capri Ceylon in fine. And I'm just going to start making my overhand, my, my flat macrame knot. I'm going to start with the left hand side with that loop that makes the cue. I bring this strand over the tail of the thread that's coming out over the leather, over that tail, under the leather, and up through this loop. We have a skill builder um, on beadshop.com that talks about how to make uh, this beaded flat macrame knot. And I actually have um, a fresh skill builder that I think you guys are going to love that's coming down the pike um, for all of these that really explains them. Um, really um, quickly and easily so you guys can refer to it. So here's my first little stitch. So now I'm going to do the second half. I'm going to go with the loop on the P side. I go over the thread, under the leather, and up through that loop, and I tighten it. Now if your top stitch has come a little loose, just come in, tighten it up, and then bring that other one just under. And can you see how I have left a little bit of space there so that your clasp will move around a bit? This has a little bit more space. That has a little bit less, but just enough so things move around so that your leather doesn't wear right there. So now I'm going to go a little bit faster and just do a few macrame stitches. And then I'm going to show you how I do this offset macrame. It's actually really super easy. I'm going to do that's one set. I'm going to do, I think, two more sets. So that's one, that's another set. And let's do this one here. Okay. Because two of these half hitches create one full square knot. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and what I started with were these silver ones right here. Okay, and so what I did was I got my zap glue like I like I do and I put some on a little baggie and I'm just going to put a little dot right there. And then 
Can you see what I also do sometimes with this zap? I don't even use this needle tip, I'll be honest. A lot of times, if I'm just squirting it out onto a baggie to use, I'll just open it up this way, uh, squirt it on my baggie from here, and then make sure that I don't have any excess glue around the outside to glue this onto the tip. Okay, it's a little tip right there. So then what I'll do is I'm gonna make a needle on this side with the zap and I'm just going to put my little um, CKC or I'm sorry my seal on right in that baggie get it right in the glue and pull it out so I can get it nice um, nice and stiff there without actually having to put a needle on it there we go and this dries so quickly I'm going to move this baggie out of the way so I don't uh, glue my hand to it and then this sets up very very quickly I'm just going to come in and give it a little bit of a clean cut like that and then I'm going to get my a little tray dump some of those beads right into it and let's string them up so for this offset macrame that I've done here can you see how the macrame is on one side how it's kind of diagonal, so it's offset. This one's up here, then the right side is there. So it goes offset like that. That's uh, This is how we set it up for that offset, okay, macrame. So I'm just gonna put a few of those A dots right in there from the mix. And you can see my thread now is stiffened, the end is stiffened um, with the glue. That zap sets up really quickly. I'm gonna put on um one two two sets three sets maybe maybe five sets maybe 10 beads total okay just for this little short one so that's two four five six there's some fuzz on this thread doesn't really matter but it's just kind of bugging me six seven eight nine and ten okay and the pave lobster i'm really glad you guys like it that really is what started this whole project right because i would like to think if liz was going to wear a wrap bracelet she'd want to wear this one with the pave clasp okay so here's this one here here's the end and I'm coming in, I'm tying a little knot so that these beads don't come off from this side. Okay, so now on this side, this is where I ended. And you can see that because there's a little scallop here where the last knot was formed and then it came in and tightened up there. So this is my starting side. So that's why I put uh, my beads um, on the left side. So I do this so I don't have to pass the beads through the loop. Okay, so I'm just going to slide one of these up and then forget about it. Just make the loop so it slides up. I get my tail up and through and tighten. Okay, now my beads have transferred to this side because I made the loop. Okay, so I'm going to slide one of those down and you can see it's offset. I make the loop, put that bare end through, and tighten. And that's it. And see how my beads have transferred to the other side. Now I'm going to make um, two, I think I made a set of two or four, let me look, stitches, just plain. I'll make four. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll make four. I think that's what I did. Three and four there we go now since i'm working in an even number those beads are back on the left side so i make that loop i come over under the leather and through the loop and then down on this side because they've transferred to the other side make the loop under the leather and through the loop now a set of two right so there's one and one and see if it loosens up, just tighten it up before you tighten that other knot up there. 
and then two and two. Let's light up our next set of beads. There's that one. I'm going to go a little bit at Kate's speed because we've got a lot to get through today. But this is how you would do this section. Whoops, don't go so fast that you forget to add the bead. Um, and you just make this, this will be your first wrap, right? So I made mine, I don't know, a little under seven inches, maybe six and three quarters or whatever. Since this is going to be a multi-strand wrap, um, it doesn't really matter, um, you know, the, the lengths on these don't matter as much as your final, your final um, measurement does, right? So if you have this at about six and three quarters or whatever, that'll be about right. It's the last wrap that you make, you really have to measure, right? Whoops, I keep forgetting to add that little that little bead on this side. I was doing that when I was making mine too. I was going so fast, I forgot to slide the bead down. So for these, just make this, you know, as long as you want this first wrap to be, just so it goes around your wrist. And we're coming up on our final, our final one here. We're going to add our final set. So let's go here. Slide that down. Super satisfying to do that. Slide that one down. And now it goes over to the left and I slide that one down. And so it's fast because the beads are only on one side, right? And they're already on. You've, you've pre-strung these. And you can pre-string them in, I don't know, this is just 10 beads. You can do them in sets of 10. Or you could do all of them at the same time. It doesn't make any difference. So now I'm just going to continue and close up and finish up. Let's just say that this is our first section. Okay, like this. So next, what I did was I came in and I made a transition here. Okay, so I transitioned, if that's the word, from the, I know it's not a word, I transitioned from the this beaded flat macrame stitch here to this laddering with the half tila and that eight cut okay so what i have here is i have a um some ko that's threaded into my sharps needle Okay, and so I want to show you how I attached this thread for the laddering because you can see I did the infinity stitch here to do this with. All right, and I just find it's easy um, to do that. Um, I feel it's easier with the infinity stitch rather than doing traditional laddering. Okay, so here is this. I'm going to come in and under that stitching, I'm going to stitch my needle down, put my needle down, stitch it through. Now I'm going to add a little bit of glue and of course I've got glue on the tip of this hypo cement. I'm using a GS hypo here. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that KO. See right there? I'm going to slide that thread through so the KO goes underneath. And I'm going to add a little more KO below that. I'm sorry, a little more glue below that on the KO. Then I'm going to make about, I don't know, two or three more sets of the macrame here. And I'm macrame over the glue and over that KO. And that KO is not going to go anywhere. Now let's pretend I'm actually going to end these strands. But what I would do is I would not cut these off at this point. I would let the glue sit. But I want to show you how I do it. 
I keep this KO kind of tight together and I'm actually going to pull it over to the left hand side of where I'm working because um, that's where I'm going to start my infinity stitch. Okay, so here's my last little stitch here. Okay, so here's this. Here's this, a little bit there, a little bit there, tighten. And then I want to make sure I grab it on the back. You can, like we did last week, get your needles and slide this thread up and under this flat macrame. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of that excess glue. But I'm going to glue this instead today. So we would let this sit, right? I would just continue to work in, right? And just keep going. Um, macrame, 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 you know, or ladder, ladder, ladder here. Um, and then after, you know, a few hours, I'd like to actually do it overnight. Then I'd come in and thread burn those away. But I'm going to um, just thread burn it now. So this top KO thread, I'm going to come in with my thread burner and burn that one. You can also trim them, but I'm going to thread burn all of these down. And I'm just going to tamp that one and tamp that little bit of cord. Okay, so that's ready to go. So now we're going to do the infinity stitch portion. Okay, so let's take a look. So we've got our KO coming out and it's going towards the left hand side of what I've got. Okay, so I'm also going to move. I don't have a lot of room to work here, so I'm going to move this up. And you can do that. You can hang on to it on the board a couple of ways, but I'm just going to get this little thread that I've gotten to lash it down with, kind of put it around the bracelet and then clamp that in. So we've got this here. Let me make sure it's on the correct side. And I'm going to make sure my strands are laying one next to the other. I'm going to clamp it on my board here. And now I kind of need to open up those strands. So I'm going to use my little KO um, spool to help me do that. OK. So now with the infinity portion. OK, what I've got here. I've laddered, laddered. I've gotten rid of that. My K was underneath. I start with a single. So it kind of widens open, you know, opens up my leather. And then I go to the Tyla and the A dot. And I then I reverse that pattern. OK, so let's let's do that. So let me start with an A dot. I'm going to get this bracelet out of the way because my thread is already tangled in it. So let me go over here. Okay. So let me get that a dot. Whoops. And of course my half tiles have spilled. So let me get those guys. Those are here. So the first bead that you put in when either you're laddering or you're doing the infinity stitch is always super important. Okay. So I've got my a dot and I'm going to put it in like this, put it on my needle and I'm going working from my left to the right. And I'm just going to come in. My threads kind of coming from the top there and I'm going to slide this bead up and kind of hold it in place with my finger. It's a little awkward at the onset. But once you get it stitched in, now I'm going to, I've gone under my leather. So I'm going to go over my leather through the bead hole and under the leather on the left hand side. And so now when I pull that thread, see how I pulled that thread under the leather on the left, how that bead is in the right, um, is in the right place. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch this through one more time. 
just to really hold this where it should be. So see how my thread is coming out under the leather? So I pop over the leather on the left, through the bead hole, pop my needle under the leather, and tighten. Now I come from the right-hand side over the leather, through the bead hole, and under the leather on the left. So what I've got here is a nice start to my infinity stitch. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to come in and we're going to do this Tyla with the two holes, right? So remember, when you're laddering with the Tyla bead, you are going to treat each hole as if it were a single bead. And can you see that's the little setup right there? Okay, so for every one half tila or two quarter tilas, whatever, you're going to use two of the eight odds. So I'm going to come in, and this time my, my thread is still going, doing the same thing. It's going to come over the leather on the left. I'm going to go through my bead hole at the top, through my eight odd, and under the leather here, and as I pull the threads, treating both of those threads as if they were one, because my thread is doubled, right? You saw that, though I didn't actually mention it. And see how these kind of just push into place. This first one's a little awkward, but you'll get it. I come back, my thread has gone under the leather, so now I go over the leather on the right-hand side, through the top hole of the half tila, and under the leather. So this first one, you kind of have to maybe coax it just a bit to get it in the right place. There we go. And after you've done this first segment, this first set, your beads will sit a lot more nicely. So see, I go through that second hole. I'll put on my second bead under the leather and wrestle it into place there. Now, can you see how that's all sitting pretty nicely? Everything, the tension is nice and even, okay? And I could go back through. John is asking, at this point, could you do traditional laddering? You sure could, and I might use, um, you could traditional ladder with KO and have the KO coming in from either side. You could also probably use the micro Ceylon if you wanted to. I will be honest that I just, I, I am much faster with the infinity stitch than I am with the laddering. So that's always my go-to, but it, it will make no difference. You're the jewelry designer on this one. So you make that call. Okay. You use that stitch and Nicole in her originals used traditional laddering. Okay. So tighten that up. Make sure that your, your uh, thread is nice and even. And then I'll put on my ADOT over here on this side. I'm going to do a couple more sections of this, and then we'll get to the beaded herringbone, okay? Because this is pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, then go back through, pop it under. So remember, the, the shape, why they call this infinity stitch, you guys, is because the shape of the, of the stitch that you're making is uh, like a figure eight, right? So you're going over and under, over and under on the sides of the leather here. So I'm back to the Tyler, the A-dot. This one millimeter leather is kind of nice to use. Sometimes I forget about it, right? I 0.5, 1.5 millimeter is such my go-to that I don't always remember that it's possible to ladder with one millimeter. Um, and it actually looks pretty nice. I need to remember to get out of my comfort zone. And this bracelet actually has gotten me out of my comfort zone. You know, I especially with wrap bracelets. Um, I don't do, and you know, I haven't done a lot of that herringbone and stuff with it. So it's always a little bit of a challenge when I think about it. But you know, you just have to put those fears aside and just kind of jump in, especially if you're making like a little sampler like this. 
um, it's no big deal, right? If it's not right, you could just cut it apart or take it out or restart it. I'll be honest, the herringbone section that I did with the um, Miyuki pearls, I started several times and I just wasn't liking how the pearls were sitting. Um, I felt it was just kind of a little clunky. I didn't love it. So I just played around with it. And I think I'm very happy now with the technique that I'm going to share with you. So um, I think you'll like this. Because I know with these big stitched projects, the deal is, I'm going to put in one more section and then we'll move on. I feel like people, um, some of these only have the coating on the sides. So that's okay. You can use it or skip it. Maybe I'll put, since this is such a short one, I'll get one with the coating on the top. But I think the thing that people are not afraid of, but the thing that, you know, maybe gives you a little bit of, you know, pause is that um, adding thread, right, or transitioning between two different types of stitches. So I've tried to make the transitions um, as easy as I can for you. So you saw that tradition I did earlier, right, the transition rather that I did earlier with the um, the flat macrame and just putting my KO down in the piece, right? So um, with this next thing we're going to do is we're going to continue to use this same piece of um, the same piece of KO. So when you cut your original piece of thread, what I did was I cut one that was long enough to do this bit of laddering. And then I had enough for about halfway through and then I had to add some more thread. Okay. So, um, so I cut probably, it was a lot. I probably cut two and a half yards of KO and doubled it over through my needle. Okay. But you could always add your KO. Actually, I, I think I lied. I think I went this far and I had to add KO in the piece. And then I had a longer piece down here. But somewhere you're going to have to add. Um, and we do have the videos on adding and taking away your leather. But essentially what I do, if I were doing this, I would, if I were adding a thread, I would start back here with my thread and weave it through just in the beads until it came out at the point that I needed it to come out at. And then this thread, I'd weave it back up through just like you were weaving off seed beads and then cut it. And then I would have my new thread here with my needle already attached. Okay. So uh, let me bring this back through and let me finish this off. Yeah, it looks like people definitely have uh, favorites when it comes to the leather. I like uh, when I'm doing a wrap, um, I like kind of a more substantial look to it honestly, but this has a little more of a delicate feel. So the one millimeter is a good match, um, but you decide what works for you. So see how I've just put on that single a dot like I did up at the top. So I finished it as I began it and I've stitched through it twice. And now I'm going to come in and what am I going to do? I'm going to ladder just a little section with that, um, with that um, fine seal on here. So let me cut another piece. This doesn't have to be very long. Maybe it's like 20 inches or so about, because this is only going to be for purposes of closing this up. So let me get this down here. Okay. And this here. And I've, my thread is over here to the, the left, right? So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to do that little flat macrame. I'm going to start my first one right there. Tighten it up. Oh, I'm going to get rid of that KO. So because it's holding that leather open and I actually want it to be closed up. So I don't know how many I did, maybe four sets or eight half hitches. So this is four, I don't know, do what looks right to you. 
Okay, and what you're doing this whole time when you're making these sections is you're taking it off the board, you're wrapping it around your wrist, you're sizing it, right, and you're kind of keeping a look at um, how long you want these to be. You could also use a little piece of paper, make a mark on that piece of paper so it's like six and a half inches or six and three quarters, and hold the, the piece up against those marks so you can kind of see when to begin and end. So I'm going to do this here, right? And I'm going to um, um, glue now at this one, okay? And maybe I'll add just a little bit more. I didn't add the KO to macrame over the top, so I think I'm just going to add one more macrame section. Even though this is a little bit of a tester, it'll kind of cement, no pun intended, this... Um, Maybe a little bit of a pun intended. Um, this right in there. And then this one. And then before I tighten, I'll get that one more little drop right there. And there. Again, we can just add these threads back up and under that section of macrame. Um, but for this one, I'm gluing and cutting mine off. Whatever works. Okay, I'll let this sit. And one final, be really careful with your glue so that you don't, you know, get a whole big bundle of glue on this piece. I even came in and kind of squeegeed a little bit off, pressed a little bit in there with my baggie. Now we've let it sit and let's thread burn this sucker off. Being very careful not to thread burn your KO and cut it off as well. Because remember, your KO is riding along underneath that. Okay, give it just a little bit of a hit there with my thread burner, and we're good to go. Okay, so now, you guys, here comes this section, and I don't want you to be scared of it. It's actually pretty simple to do if you just kind of um, follow what I'm going to show you here. So we've done this section, right? This one here. We've done this one here, this ladder. And you can do any pattern you want, whatever you want to do, right? You can come in. And here is the herringbone with the pearl fitted in, okay? Fit in between. So I'm going to start by cutting three pieces of the KO. Now for this, you can see I continued, I'm sorry, with the CKC, you can see I continued making a, another stitch, that flat macrame with the three strands of the CKC. So I cut three yards of each color and then found the center point and started from the center point here. Okay, so I'm going to cut, just for this, I'm going to cut maybe, maybe like a yard so I've got enough um, to demonstrate with because I'm going to demonstrate two techniques with this. We're going to do the herringbone that has the Miyuki pearl, and then we're going to go into the flat macrame knot. And again, I'm using 0.4 Chinese knotting cord. Um, I think that the 0.4 works really well with the um, one millimeter. If you're sizing it up, you might want to go up to the 0.5. Okay, so there's my three strands. All right. So now um, let's take a look. I'm going to go underneath. And this strand right here, it's just kind of riding along. So I'm going to get my clamp, and I'm just going to clamp it. So it's just here. And can you see how it's kind of coming along along the left-hand side here? So just ignore it for the moment. So I'm going to go underneath here. And I'm going to get you a wide view so you can kind of see what my hands are doing. <laughs> you should see the bead table next to me. So I'm going to get my center here, and I push that up. Okay, so I found the center. Now I also need to kind of hold this opening open um, 
you know, before I get any further though, I need a little bit of a larger space to work. So let me pull this down, pull that down to there, attach it back to our board, attach this down here, There we go. Now, I'm going to get my KO spool if I can find it. And I've opened this up. So again, I've got my 0.4 Chinese knotting cord right here. Okay. And for the finished piece, the real piece, I cut about three yards and doubled it over so I'd have a yard and a half on each side of all three. Okay. So now let me get a little tighter. So you can see just to start it, it's not difficult. I choose either a right or a left side, doesn't matter. But I bring all three strands through and under. And then the three strands from the opposite side through and under. Okay and push that up. And that's the stitch. I hold it here with my index finger and I go from the left and then the right through the center. Tighten them up. And since you're using the three strands, they're gonna bunch just a little and that's okay because that's kind of part of the look. But what I do, and I do it kind of unconsciously, actually, is I when I pull my threads, after I've pulled my threads tight in this configuration here, I kind of take my thumbnail and I just draw it down my three strands so it lays them kind of flat, okay? So we'll go back to, whoops, this left-hand side um, needs to be tacked down a little bit. There we go. So now I go from the left. Always start from the the same side, right? Then I take this one and I go under to the right, tighten it up. And since I flattened it out, my threads are mostly flat. Okay. See how I draw my thumbnail down them and I pop the left ones down in the middle. See, so that goes over the left hand side. And then my right ones go down in the middle towards the left and push them both up at the same time. So in the left, in the right, so they cross right in the middle there and tighten them up. I'm going to do two more into the left, in from the left, in from the right. And that's, I tighten them both at the same time too. I don't try and shove one up and tighten and then the other. Okay. So here it is. See how it's kind of loose? And then I bring it up. Now it's time for a purl. Okay. So now what I do to kind of hold things tight is I get another clamp and I just sort of clamp this out of the way. If you're using a macrame board, you can put it in the macrame boards and the grooves in the macrame boards uh, in the side. Okay. But now what I do is I un um, unclamp my CKC that has the needle attached and I'm going to infinity stitch a purl. So here's my thread coming down from the left. I put my purl on. I dip my thread under the left hand side. Back up and over the left under the right. Whoops, come back there. And this first stitch, you just kind of want to get it in there. Not so it's super tight, right? But I want you to see that I want to get a little closer. So see how it's, it's gone around and through. Now I'm going to um, repeat that thread path. So it's really in there. through the hole of my bead, under the leather, through the hole of my bead, 
under the leather. Now it's in there, it's not going anywhere. And I'm gonna come in and clamp this thread back down, okay? Now I just pretend that that pearl isn't even there. So I, I had started from the left, right? So let me unclamp it. So from the left, and if you need to kind of push your pearl up just a little bit, you can, because it's not, it's tight, you know, it's snug, but it's not, you know, I haven't pulled the leather in too tightly or anything. The tension is all pretty equal. So I dip in the strands from the left, dip in the strands from the right, so they're crossed, and they herringbone and cross right under that pearl, okay? Underneath, to the left, underneath from the right. Tighten it up, and if you have to play with the tension just a little bit, you can. You can use your awl to kind of help with that. But don't get too precious about this, right? Part of the beauty of this herringbone is that it is, um, has a little bit of an organic feel to it, right? Controlled though, you don't want it to be messy. And then, I don't know, you can count how many, how many of these uh, herringbone crosses you've done, or you can just do it visually. Mine, if you look closely at the bracelet, you can see that they're not very even <laughs> in between each pearl. So continue until you're ready to add another pearl. I'm going to go one more section here. Kathy's asking if it matters if the CKC, I mean, if the Chinese knotting cord, yeah, CKC strands stay in order. No, it does not. I think that if you were trying to keep them in order, it would drive you crazy. So just kind of let them go. The only thing that I do after I've done that cross is I come in and I kind of give them that little sweep with my thumbnail to kind of keep them flat. But the order has kind of moved around and that's just fine with me. See how when I'm getting too tight underneath there, it goes a little funny. So cross it and then tighten. Okay, so now I will add, let me do one more, and I'm going to add another pearl, and then we'll call this section done. Whoops. There we go. So I'm going to unclip my thread, that thread that I've carried along that KO, and... Oops, sorry. This goes through. I ladder it in. Kind of tighten these down. I can tighten this one over here on the, on the tray. I don't want it to be too tight, though, because I don't want it to pull off that way. So here's my pearl. Put it in as if I'm doing the infinity stitch stitch it in place and these small little infinity stitch stitches will never be seen try not to split your threads like i did just there there we go and if it's getting a little loose up top that's okay you can come in and pull that herringbone tight when uh, you've stitched it in place so see there it is and it is, it's a little, um, it's a little nest, right? That's exactly right, Curtis, a little nest. So I come in from the left and I can take away now this KO for a spool because it's kind of in my way. And then I go to the right. And the great thing about this is we have all kinds of learning that support this and you can watch this video again and again when you're working on this piece. We'll have, um, by the beginning of next week, uh, the project map and everything up for you guys to consult. 
Um, Cause I'll have it done. So there's that. I'll have it done, she says, hopefully, but this one's got to get done so you guys can see it. So there we go. So now you just continue until you're finished with this section. And I'll count the pearls that I did in my section, but I think I did maybe six or seven um, about. And then, uh, what a surprise, we're going to uh, put another section of macrame laddering with our Ceylon in there with the Capri Ceylon with the fine to hold, to make it a nice placeholder for that. Let me just do two more here. And then I'll show you. We're going to move on to our next section. And this second, here we go, one and two. There we go. So now I'm going to bring all of this down. I'm going to unpin all of this. I'm going to bring all of this together. And I'm going to connect it to my board. Okay. And hopefully the tension will keep that herringbone in place. Okay. So I'm going to get another piece of the Ceylon in fine. And we're going to do that same thing. I'm going to come in and do a section of flat macrame to hold it all in place. There we go. And I'm macrameing over the leather, the KO, all of the Chinese knotting cord. I want to make sure that, there we go, that was sticking out a little bit. So it's just, it cinches everything in nicely. Let's get this a little bit flatter. It's a little twisty. There we go. That's better. Okay. And choose the colors that work for you. You know, you can do this in any color way that you'd like. You may have a monthly mix, a previous monthly mix that you want to use for this. That's fine too. Um, it's all about just being in the moment with the section you're working on. Like, I don't even know how I'm going to finish this bracelet, but I don't care. I'll, I'll get to that part when I come to it, right? I don't want to think about it too much. I'm going to add my glue as before. Okay, here, a little bit. A little bit there. Not over the top. One last bit here and here. Oh, that's a little bit of extra. I'll do it on the back. Put the lid on. And again, if this were real jewelry making time and not demo time, I would not cut these tails off yet. But since this is just demo time, I'm not worrying about it too much. And what I need to get rid of now is I need to get rid of this KO. So I'm going to do that. So let's thread burn that KO away. And let's thread burn this Ceylon away. There. Under tension. And then if there's a little kind of stiff little tail that's here, I'm just going to tap it with the tip of my warm thread burner. Okay. So now I'm ready to do the flat macrame section. 
Okay, so you can see, let me take this off and let's take a look. So you can see how nice and clean that looks there. And, you know, it's pretty supple. It's a pretty nice little piece. So we've got our first one here, the second one, and our third one here, right? So now let's do this one. So I'm going to come in. It's a little bit of extra glue there. So let me see if I can get this Chinese knotting cord where I need it to be. There we go. Let me go ahead and lash this to the board. Here, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to clip it that way. And I'm going to clip this across here. And we do carry these thread burners at beadshop.com. We carry the Perfect End thread burner, it's called. And it is, um, uh, it's a little more expensive than uh, others can be, but we've tried them out for years. We've used these for years. So I'm really super happy with um, the Perfect End one. And sometimes when you're storing your thread burner, if you're not using it, go ahead and take the battery out so it doesn't you know, corrode or anything. Though batteries don't do that as much anymore. But you can always replace, take the battery out if you're gonna store this. And then of course, we've got the tips that you can um, change out if you need to, okay? So I've split my Chinese knotting cord into two segments, three of um, one color on one side and three of one color on the other, okay? So I split these out. Let's see, there we go. And now I'm just going to um, tie my flat macrame knot with this. So I'm gonna start from the left, make that P with all three threads, Get the right hand side over the tail that comes out under the leather and all three go up through the loop and tighten. This is also where I do that kind of flattening them, but they are going to twist a little bit and that's just part of how this stitch looks. Now you can do this with all three or you could take one out and just do it with two colors or you could take two out and just do it with one color, whatever works for you, okay? But this is the next stitch that we've got here. And when you're pulling them tight, sometimes if they're not all pulling together, you can kind of tighten up one and then the other. There we go. That looks right. And you just continue going. If you feel like you need to raise your cord up, you can do that with your KO spool. Okay. And yeah, you want to use your thread burner in a well-ventilated area because it definitely burns. This um, CKC is a polyester thread. Both the Ceylon and the CKC are. So they're a little... They're a little smelly. So you want to make sure that you have good ventilation. But it dissipates very, very quickly. You don't want to hover over the top, though, while it's burning away. So just treat all three of these threads, you guys, as if they were one. Like so. Tighten that up if the stitch doesn't look right. There we go. You can always use your awl to take the stitch out if it's not laying exactly like you want it. Just unknot it and then re-knot it. Oops. Move that KO down a little bit. I like to have a lot of room when I do this one just so my hands can really get in there. And so make this the length that you want it to be, whatever works for you. And you can see <clears throat> what I did here is I've done that section of knotting. And what did I end it with? 
another section of this cord. So what you could do if you wanted, if you had enough left over, you could choose one of your strands of Chinese knotting cord, leave those out, put the rest of these underneath here, gather them all together, and you could close it with just one of these cords instead of adding a separate one like I did earlier. And I just wanted to show you that. And then as you're macrameing this, and I use the blue, but just because it kind of matched the other blue, but maybe you'd want a contrast color. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. But then as I get closer to finishing it off, I'll start to take down, like I'll take out two, taper them out a little bit, put this back down, this side here. And then as I tighten them down, I want to make sure that I catch all those little tails. This blue is so vibrant. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of glue because it's going to be time for me to, um, and I could do, uh, John, that's a really great um, observation. I could just do the spiral knot. I could spiral knot this down. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll do that um, in one of these. Uh, let me add just a touch of glue here. Get my little baggie so I don't mark up my pad. I'm going to add just a little bit. I don't even know why I added it, but I did. Um, because it's going to be close to ending here. I'm going to cut this one and this one. And I'll just keep going. But doing the spiral knot here would also look very nice with just this single. And the spiral knot, just to mention it, so that we're all on the same page with it, the spiral macrame is just macrame in one direction so that it spirals around. So here's this. And we're going to finish this off by gluing there and there and there on the closing threads. Tightening, gluing the front, gluing the back, putting the cap back on the hypo cement, which is always the biggest trick. There we go. I'm going to press this to get any excess glue out. I'd let it sit, but we're going to continue on here. I'm actually going to put this inside. It's a little bit wider, so I'm going to put my thread inside. Then I'm going to press the button. And as it heats, it's going to pull through. Same thing here through. Be careful now because that tip is warm. Press the button and pull. I'm going to un lash this and you can see I've got a little bit of extra cord there so I'm going to come in and very carefully burn that away that piece wants to stick up and I undid that one knot so that's okay it's, I should have waited and let it sit just a little bit more but that's okay let me just get this tip clean. 
And let me take this off here. And I could re-glue it or whatever. There we go. And let me get that piece out. Let me get a little closer to my ice eye line here. So sight line. And then I'll put it back in the shop for you to see. Sometimes if it's not exactly in the right place, I can't <laughs> I can't see where to do it. Let me get that right there. There we go. Okay. So that's all in there and good to go. Okay. So now we have a decision to make. So we've got some sections here. I thought that my next section, what I would do, and I'm going to continue working on this sampler piece because then whatever I do on the sampler, I'll translate on the big piece uh, later for the finished piece. So since I've got the sampler going, um, then I can test out some ways that I might want to finish it. So, oh good, and we're, oh gosh, we're almost actually there. This always takes a little bit of time. So what I think I'm going to do here, um, let me look. I'm going to test this out, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this probably next week. Let me see what we've got on tap here real quick. Um, bear with me here just a second while I double check. I always, these projects are always a little more epic than I think. Next week we've got um, a really kind of an awesome thing that we're going to play around with um, that we've got going on for you guys. But I will come back on the 10th and uh, finish this off because Janice and I this Friday are finishing off the Adobe. We're sharing that one with you. And then I'll show you the closing um, on the 10th, um, the September for that one, just so uh, I won't leave you guys hanging. But it's really, um, it always takes longer than you think it does for these. But let me just test something out before I started a little late. So you guys are okay with that, I think. I'm going to come in with some macrame and I think I'm going to do it, what we did here, we did it with, we did this actually with the CKC. So I think I'm going to use the CKC for this one. I closed this off here. If my strands had been long enough, I could have carried them along. But I would have needed to um, add some anyway. So let me add a color. I'm going to add, let's see, I think I want it to be this purple. And I'm just going to cut a length. And that's why having a little bit of a tester like this is always good. But I'm going to come in. Find my center. And this is like the last section that I'll do, I think. And then you'll see the continuing saga of this. I'm going to macrame this right into place. And in that other one, we had a little bit of beaded macrame. Um, so I think I might bead this. We also have some bugles that I need to use, but I think I know what I'm going to do with the bugles. So I'll get there. So let me just, I don't know how many I did here. Several. Maybe three sets. Do one more. And I'm going to add the A dots go really nicely on this cord. Right, so I'm just going to put a few of these guys. I'm going to put one, two, three, 
And I'm just mixing these blues for, I'm going to put on eight, five, six. You can stiffen this end like with the zap too, if you want it. But, oops, that one didn't want to go on. Just two more. Come on. Seven. Get that guy back here. Eight. Okay. And I'm going to tie my knot. And let's go ahead and do the flat macrame in this. Okay, remember we capture that bead in the loop and we slide it down. And I really like the contrast of the blue cord underneath and the blue bead and the purple. This is the boysenberry color of the CKC. I'm not going to have any space in between these. These are just going to go nice and tight uh, next to each other, which gives it a little bit of a different look. Same stitch, just a little bit of a different configuration. Can you see how nicely those sit there? And this, and let's slide this one down. Whoops, two of my beads came off. So maybe that means that it only wanted a set of three and not four. So I'm going to do one plain one set here. Now, let me see. I'm going to put these Miyuki pearls have nice big holes. Um, but they're not quite as big. I, I can't get two in there. So I'm going to put one on one side, one on the other. Let's see how this looks. So it's like that. So it makes it like a little section here. Hmm. I'm going to tie it and see what it looks like, but I don't think I like it. I don't know. Maybe I do. Let me see. Eh, it's a little wonky. Liz would not like anything that's wonky like that, right? Let me see. I'm going to see if these A dot fit. A dots fit on there. No. I like how these offset each other, though. Let me see. Put this on. Just stick with me here for a second while I think about this. If this next little trick doesn't work, I'm going to um, continue on with it later. So maybe if I do that one strand there, this is why a sampler is always so good. Tighten it up. Tighten that up. Tighten this up. Slide this one up. Two stitches in between. One. Yes, I do like this, I think. And two. Tighten it up so it goes around. Slide this one up. And it's kind of looking like those 
a little bit like those goddess bracelets we did with the jump rings. You remember that? No more fitting tribute, I think, for the Liz bracelet than to put in that little bit of a section. Tighten that up. If it doesn't want to stay tight, get your finger on it. Tell it that you're the boss. And then let me do two sets here. All right, I'm going to get a little tight down there. That doesn't look too bad, I think, right? So then I'll do another section like that there and another section like that there and maybe do like maybe one, two, three, four, maybe five of these and four of these maybe. I'll see how it looks, but I kind of, I like it. And it's nice and steady. And that kind of is like this one, except it's offset because these pearls don't have a hole that's large enough. So it's the same idea. We're just carrying along this blue, and it shows pretty nicely through. And it looks nice on both sides. It's sturdy. It's not going anywhere. So I think it's a good, I think it's a good way to go. So that's going to be our, our next section. So I'm going to work on that section next, and then I'll have a, um, a uh, bugles section. Before I talk any further uh, from this, you guys, you know I've got a giveaway. So I know that this one went a little bit long. So I'm going to show you uh, what I've got for the giveaway, and I'm going to have you guys put in into the chat. Look at this. I've got a lovely strand of, it's like three millimeter micro faceted lapis, right? So that's going to be today's giveaway. So what you're going to do is you are going to uh, put in hashtag blue in the comments to enter the giveaway. And Remember that you need to grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook if you're watching in any of our groups in the Bead Table group or the Great Bead Extravaganza group. If you're watching anywhere else like on YouTube or on our regular Bead Shop group on Facebook, we can already see that it's you. So enter hashtag blue to enter the giveaway and the giveaway entries are only valid on this live broadcast here on 9121. So I'm going to let you guys enter that hashtag while you're commenting. Comment, comment. And I'm going to, so this is a lovely strand of lapis that I had put away in my little chest of delights here. And I'll show you that length is about 13 inches. And when everybody, I'll go for just a few more minutes. And when I've got a few more entries, I'll go ahead and I'll run the, um, the giveaway tool. And it doesn't matter how many times you enter. It'll only count your name that one time. And... Um, it'll go across all of our viewing platforms, Facebook, YouTube, wherever it is you're watching them, watching us. Okay, so I'm going to come in. I will tamp this back down with my clips and then I'll be able to come in and add more of these beads. And you can see for this one, just a reminder on this one. There's no space in between these two. And can you see how different that looks, that offset stitch looks when you do it a little closer together versus a little farther apart? And you can really see the blue underneath that. Okay. So keep, um, keep uh, entering. We'll do this for a few 
more moments and I just want to go over you can find as everyone is is commenting and stuff let me say that you can find all of our um, social posts I guess I want to say you can follow us on our Instagram at beadshop.com you can join us over on the bead table uh, facebook.com um, at the bead table we'd love to have you over there we have a great book a group of over 6,000 beaters that share a lot of great projects and and chat over there and of course if you are watching on our YouTube channel either now or on the replay thank you so much for watching and do um, give us a like and a subscribe we really appreciate all of that um, social engagement it just helps people find us all that much better and of course you can find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website and make sure you sign up for our newsletter you guys we've got something coming up next week it's a janice designed um item that i think you all are going to wake want to wake up early and open your newsletters and grab one and um we're going to have fun with the broadcast next week with janice uh janice is going to be back with me on friday as well um to um to join us um and have uh good times with finishing up the adobe bracelet so let me go ahead and i'm gonna add um bear with me here i'm gonna add the screen here so we can get the giveaway tool in here there we go i've got 99 entries which is awesome so if we're ready let's go ahead and hit that go button and our winner today for this lovely lapis is diane diane congratulations who's watching over on youtube excellent so miss diane i think we've got your info but if you would just uh for fun would you go ahead and email us let me just get that right up here if you will email your mailing information right to info at beadshop.com i will wrap this up and send it out to you today thank you so much and congratulations it's great thank you thank you let me get this out here let me go back to the comments and i hope you guys had good times uh today it was i it was pretty fun <laughs> So, of course, these wrap bracelets are always super epic. I'm excited to share with you what I do with this. So I'll be back on the 10th for the second part of this extravaganza. Uh, Friday, Janice and I will be doing, as I say, Adobe. We'll be finishing up that wrap, um, the wrapped loop for that. Um, on Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, we've got something really fun coming up on the broadcast. You're not going to want to miss. And it's the start of my birthday month. So we're going to be doing a lot of things in the Sapphire theme. So pick up our limited edition um, Sapphire mix. And I cannot wait to see what it is that you guys make with it. Hope to see you over at the bead table. And I will see you on Friday with Janice. So have a great day, everyone. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much, everybody.